This video deals with the principle of least common mechanism. Least common mechanism speaks to confinement. It basically says, don't share. The reason is that information can flow along channels when you share things. In fact, in many cases, these are known as covert channels or side channel attacks. As an example, let's say that you and I are on a system and we're, in theory at least, completely isolated from one another, but we're sharing a common CPU. So that's a shared channel. And by manipulating how much time I get on the CPU, if I get a little time, that's a zero bit. If I get a lot of time, that's a one bit. If you can measure that, and you can measure it by determining when you don't have access to the CPU, information can be passed. Similarly, there's been a lot of work on side channel attacks. That's where you do encryption, for example, or some action. But because of the way the system runs, the power it draws, the time it takes, and so forth, you're able to get information about secret things like cryptographic keys. That is a type of covert channel. And again, it's because the system is being shared. Now, to combat this, the way it's done is with isolation. And there are two types of isolation, essentially. One is a virtual machine where the program is placed or the uh, mechanisms, the tools are placed into a virtual machine. And they think the virtual machine is the real machine. The virtual machine, however, can control the interactions of those processes with external resources. Sandboxes or jails do this, try to do the same thing, but they don't provide a virtual machine. They run directly on the machine that the program would run on. But what they do is they intercept system calls or they change the notion of the environment, for example, uh, changing roots so that the root of the file system means something very different, things like that. And the sandboxes can be done either at the program level or um, compilers can do checking, uh, or there are a wide variety of ways to do this. But the important point is the programs here are inhibited from sharing. You're trying to block as much sharing as you can. And now here's an example that will hopefully get you thinking a little bit about uh, the internet. Bank web servers are all over the place. When you do banking over the web, you go through one. Attackers have been known to do what's called a distributed denial of service attack, where they simply flood the bank servers. The hope is to prevent people, legitimate users, from accessing the server. In terms of the principle of least common mechanism, now why would this work? Uh, and also think about, while you're thinking about that, think also about what an effective countermeasure might be. And I'll give you a minute uh, for that one. Okay, in terms of principles of least common mechanism, look for things that are shared. And what is shared here between the attackers and the legitimate users? Well, it's the internet or network connection. So that's why it works in terms of the principles. Effectively, what's happening is the attackers are trying to block your access by overwhelming the common channel you use, you both are using to get to the bank servers. So in terms of an effective countermeasure, you need somehow to prevent the attackers from doing that. And unfortunately, there's not really a good way to do that yet. One thing banks can do is shuffle the suspect traffic off to another network or block it at the router level and then allow the other connections to go through, the, the ones that they believe are legitimate. So that, in effect, is saying, okay, at the place where you start sharing the channel to the bank, we're going to block the bad folks so that only the good folks can use the channel. And that, in fact, is one of the ways that you protect against distributed denial of service attacks.